skies above the vast oceans hold tales of the heroism of United States Navy aviators. On the decks of majestic aircraft carriers, amidst the roar of engines and the sea breeze, aspiring fighter pilots train to master the skies and seas. For more than three decades, the T-45 Goshawk jet trainer has been the backbone of U.S. Navy pilot training. However, time never stands still, and the T-45's aging has now reached its limit, prompting the U.S. Navy to seek a more modern, robust successor ready to face future challenges. This is the new jet trainer that will replace the legendary T-45 Goshawk in the Undergraduate Jet Training System UJTS program. The T-45 Goshawk is no ordinary aircraft. Based on the Hawk jet trainer manufactured by British Aerospace, now BAE Systems, the T-45 entered service in 1991. It was specifically designed to train U.S. Navy aviators in carrier operations, a demanding task requiring exceptional precision. With its modern glass cockpit and carrier landing capability, the T-45 has trained thousands of pilots to pilot advanced fighter jets like the F-A-18 Hornet and F-35 Lightning II. However, after more than 30 years, the T-45 is beginning to show signs of fatigue, soaring maintenance costs, technical issues like hypoxia incidents, and technological limitations have forced the U.S. Navy to move quickly to find a replacement. The UJTS program was born to address this challenge. The U.S. Navy plans to replace approximately 145 to 200 T-45s with a new, more cost-effective, advanced trainer jet capable of preparing pilots for the fifth-generation fighter jet era. This competition has become a platform for several giants in the defense industry, each offering their best solutions. Who are the candidates? Let's take a look at the contenders vying for the title of successor to the T-45. Sierra Nevada Corporation SNC, is offering a new design, the UTS Freedom Trainer, a twin-engine jet trainer designed specifically for the U.S. Navy. Unlike other candidates that adapt existing aircraft, the Freedom is a clean-sheet design built from scratch, focused on carrier takeoff and landing capabilities, including Field Carrier Landing Practice FCLP, and touch-and-go training. SNC claims the Freedom has a 40% lower life cycle cost than the T-45, with an airframe lifespan of up to 16,000 hours and a capability of 35,000 touch-and-goes. The aircraft also features a modern digital cockpit and an open systems architecture that facilitates future upgrades. The Freedom's advantage lies in its ability to address carrier training requirements that have been removed from the UJTS requirements, providing flexibility should the Navy change its mind in the future. However, because it is a new design, the Freedom does not yet have a physical prototype, which could pose a risk in terms of development time and cost. The Italian company Leonardo is partnering with Textron Aviation Defense to offer the M346N, a naval version of the M346 Master Jet Trainer. The M346 is already used by several countries, including Italy, Israel, and Singapore, to train fourth and fifth generation fighter pilots. The M346N variant is specifically designed for the UJTS requirements with features such as a tailhook, reinforced landing gear, and a training system compatible with U.S. Navy standards. The M346N is considered a low-risk solution because its basic platform is already proven and operationally used in many countries. Leonardo and Textron emphasize that this aircraft requires only minor modifications to meet the requirements of carrier operations making it faster to produce than a new design. However, the M346N is still in the concept stage, and a fully featured prototype has not yet been built. Lockheed Martin is partnering with Korea Aerospace Industries KAI, to offer the TF-50N, a naval variant of the T-50 Golden Eagle jet trainer. The T-50 has proven successful in the international market, used by countries such as Poland and several Southeast Asian nations in the FA-50 variant. The TF-50N is designed for carrier operations, with features such as a landing hook, reinforced landing gear, and the possibility of retractable wings to save space on aircraft carriers. The advantage of the TF-50N is its relatively low development cost, 
as it is based on an existing and proven platform. Lockheed Martin also has extensive experience working with the U.S. Navy, which provides confidence in system integration. However, like the M346N, a prototype of the TF50N has not yet been built, and modifications for carrier operations are still in the design phase. Boeing is offering the T-7B Red Hawk, a naval variant of the T-7A Red Hawk, which has been selected by the U.S. Air Force to replace the T-38 Talon. The T-7B will be modified with features such as increased fuel capacity, the ability to carry AIM-9X training missiles, and a reconfigurable cockpit to mimic the F-A-18 or F-35. Boeing claims that the T-7B has a significantly lower operating cost, approximately $7, 200 per flight hour, compared to the T-45. However, the T-7B was originally designed for land-based operations, requiring significant modifications for carrier operations, such as structural reinforcement and the addition of landing hooks. This could increase costs and development time, making it a riskier option compared to other candidates with experience in the maritime environment. Choosing a replacement for the T-45 Goshawk is no easy task. The U.S. Navy must consider several factors, such as cost, development time, carrier capability, and ease of integration with existing training systems. The decision to remove the carrier landing requirement from the UJTS has sparked debate, as this exercise is considered crucial for preparing pilots for real-world conditions at sea. Some candidates, such as the Freedom and TF-50N, still offer this capability as an advantage, but this could increase costs and design complexity. Furthermore, the Navy must ensure that the new jet trainer can support training for modern fighter aircraft, which possess far more advanced technology than the T-45. Another factor is production and supply chain readiness. Candidates like the M346N and TF50N have the advantage of being based on existing platforms, while the Freedom, still in the design phase, may take longer to reach production readiness. The UJTS program is expected to reach a winner decision in 2027 after being delayed from the original plan of 2026. This new jet trainer will be the backbone of U.S. Navy and Marine Corps aviator training for decades to come. With increasingly advanced technology and the need to produce pilots ready to face modern challenges, the choice of a new jet trainer will significantly determine the future of U.S. naval aviation. Each of the available candidates has its own advantages and disadvantages. The Freedom offers an innovative solution with a focus on aircraft carrier operations. The M346N and TF50N offer proven platforms with minimal modifications, while the T7B promises low operational costs but requires further development for naval requirements. Whichever option is chosen, the new jet trainer must be able to bridge the gap between training and actual operations, ensuring that U.S. Navy pilots remain among the best in the world. With intense competition and constantly evolving technology, the UJTS program is one of the most exciting projects to follow in the world of military aviation.